When you're building a big collection of animals like we have in the Steinhardt Aquarium, you've really got to think about where they would come from. And of course, some of them come from other zoos and aquariums. Some of them are bred in captivity. Some of them are come from dealers. And then sometimes we actually have, have to or choose to go to the wild and catch them ourselves. But when you do that, there's an enormous amount of planning that has to go into it ahead of time because you don't just go out catch some frogs and come home. It's answering two questions. Can we care for it? And then can we remove it? without impacting the habitat or the species in the wild long term. Chris, an aquarium biologist, recently went to Costa Rica to collect animals for the Academy's rainforest exhibit. And we really wanted to diversify our collection of Costa Rica animals. Costa Rica is a great country for us to go collecting in because their government is um, very forward thinking in terms of ecotourism and um, Manage, management of the resources, so it's, it's a good place to foster a relationship. So it takes conservation very seriously. We worked with the Costa Rican government and we worked with the United States government to make sure we had all the necessary permits, that we were collecting populations that were plentiful, um, that populations that weren't in danger, and we worked with a guide in country who does conservation work. All of the species that we collected in Costa Rica were common species. Um, some of them you can walk into a field and find 60 or 70 of them in an hour. In fact, that was the case with some of the, the dart frogs that we brought back. We brought back several species of dart frog, species of glass frog, two species of lizard, and several species of snakes. We had a species list that we were targeting primarily. And we also wanted to target equal amounts of male and female animals to bring back to breed so that we could sustain the collection here without too many collecting trips. The collecting trip focused on herps, amphibians, and reptiles. But Vicki actually cares for the birds in the Academy's rainforest. She went along to study the real habitats those birds live in. I had a tendency to look up a lot and the herpetologist had to remind me that we were looking down for things. The amounts of Tupperware that we brought over to ship the animals back might be surprising. We use a lot of plastic deli cups and even um, empty Coke bottles, empty uh, Gatorade bottles to collect. With frogs especially, you want to get them in fairly small containers so they don't bang themselves up in transport. Once you start amassing your collection, you have to take really good care of it. And at the end of each day, more and more time would be taken just taking care of the animals so that you made sure they were in best possible condition when you were going to ship them back to SFO. So once we had everything that we wanted and had all our permits in place, we then uh, packed them into a large box and then they're shipped uh, via airline directly to the United States. And once the animals arrived here, they went into a process called quarantine. And what quarantine is, is a certain time frame, usually 30 days, that the animals are isolated in a room separate from the rest of our collection. And during that process, the animals are evaluated for any infectious diseases that may cause um, illness or cause um, harm to our resident collection. Also during that time during quarantine, um, animals are monitored in an observable environment. Um, they're given opportunities to become acclimated to prepared diets, to artificial lighting, various housing to then make them live healthy lives in captivity. After 30 days, if they have no parasites and they look very good healthy-wise, then they're able to go on exhibit. Some of them we put directly on exhibit, and some we have in our back of house area uh, to focus more on breeding them. And as time passes, we'll have more individuals of those species to put on exhibit for the public to enjoy. If we can collect, we can be successful, share that information to other institutions, then there's no need to continue to collect from the wild, that we can have self-sustaining populations in captivity.